Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today is the start of a hopefully exciting new reading vlog. I've partnered with five small booktubers, which means at the time of filming this, they all had 2,000 or fewer subscribers on their channels. So I've asked five small booktubers to recommend books for me to read that they think I would enjoy. This is going to be a really fun project and a way for some of you to find new creators that you might want to check out and follow. I'm going to let all of these wonderful creators introduce themselves and introduce the books that I'm going to be reading. Each of them has selected something for me and I will note that all of these are books that were already on my TBR. So either I owned them physically or I had access to an audio copy or an ebook copy. I decided to do that partly because I really do need to read down my personal TBR. To give you a sense, they had like over 500 books to choose from. So it's not like I was like, here are 10 books on my bookshelf that you can pick from. Like I have a lot of books on my TBR. So they have picked five books for me to read and I'm very excited about the selection. Here are the booktubers to introduce themselves and introduce those books and I will see you back here in just a minute. Hello Bethany, thank you so much for asking me to be part of this video. My name is Charles for you guys who do not know me. I run the channel Books on Stereo and I want to recommend a book for Bethany to read and that book is such a fun age by Keely Reed. I absolutely love this book. It is a quirky, insightful look at modern day race relationships in the modern USA. I really don't know if you'll like this book, but I do think that you do love The Hate You Give, and I feel like that book, Such a Fun Age, is such a similar vibe to The Hate You Give that I feel like you will like this book as well because it kind of deals with like hard hitting racial issues. So I hope you enjoy it. Hi Bethany, thank you for having me on your channel, and hi everyone. If you don't know me, my name is Becky. I am from the channel Coffee Cocktails and Books, and the book I'm recommending for you is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. This is following Piranesi who lives in this labyrinth-like house where there are infinite rooms and infinite corridors that exist. And within this house is this ocean that lives there that is currently contained. And Piranesi, when exploring the house, comes across a man called the other who visits Piranesi twice a week and wants Piranesi's helps in researching what is known as a great and secret knowledge. But as Piranesi continues to explore, evidence of another person emerges, a deep and terrible truth revealing a world beyond the one that Piranesi thought that he knew. This sounds like it will be a really fun, kind of almost surrealist, adventure and this is also like a super duper short one and one that i really hope that you enjoy hey honey one day bethany here i am michelle from thor wants another letter i am going to be recommending either percy jackson and the olympian series um mostly because uh i find percy to be an endearing chaotic adhd bean but also just because i love the story it's timeless but I also very much loved New Kid by Jerry Craft. It is a graphic novel and I loved that one because of what it's like to be in school and dealing with microaggressions and having to switch, like code switch who you are around the other part of your school and then between people that you feel more comfortable with. And so I personally loved it. I love reading graphic novels anytime I can. It's the best time ever. And I hope that you like what you choose. I cannot wait to see this video. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this and a part of your life. You're so amazing. I know that you, whatever you read, you're going to have fun with it. And I will talk to you later. Bye. Hi, everyone. My name is Laura. I'm from the channel of Book Circus here on YouTube and Instagram. And Bethany asked me to choose a book for her to read this month. And the book that I chose is Transcendent Kingdom by Yaa Jossi. So Bethany, I chose this book for you to read because it's a book that I've read and really, really enjoyed. And I think that you will too. In this book, we're following Gifty, who is a sixth year PhD candidate at Cambridge University. She is trying to use science and religion to understand the suffering that she sees around her in her family and her friends. I think that this is such 
an interesting book. It's very quiet and introspective. The book focuses a lot on Gifty's internal struggles, so it is very character focused, which I think is something that you really enjoy. It explores a lot of philosophical ideas, and it's one that I personally related to a lot because as someone who grew up in a very religious household, growing up I struggled to form my own thoughts and ideas and opinions and beliefs without necessarily relying strictly on what I've been taught. I think that this book offers a lot to think about. Ja Jesse's writing is absolutely beautiful and I really hope that it's a book that you'll enjoy. So Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Jesse, I cannot wait to hear your thoughts on it. Hi, my name is Kira and my channel is called The Book Bella and I like to read and review books. I have actually recommended to the bookish Bethany that she read The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin because this book is amazing. This book circulates around a world where they use soul magic and dream magic to heal and make a difference like in their temples. So you have two different types of people who collect this type of magic. You have one person that is called a gatherer and they go from house to house in the middle of the night collecting dreams and using those dreams to intake magic. These gatherers usually target people that can't go to the temple. The temple we have people called sharers. Those sharers actually take the magic and use it for people like that have mental illness, disease, anything that could be considered an ailment. But they also collect magic from people who bring offerings to the temple. Now, the normal person they hold like a little bit of dream magic and then they have to go to the temple and they have to share it. But there's something really awry going on in this world where they have something called a reaper. A reaper is very violent and they actually take nightmares, which is a different type of dream magic. And these reapers, they never seem to stop being hungry for more violence and nightmares, and they actually extract the dreams very violently, which is a problem. This book is extremely expansive in the way that it discusses the world. The overall development of the characters are very fascinating, and the mystery that looks behind the scenes is also extremely intense. This book was one of my favorite ones that I read last year and I really hope the beautifully bookish Bethany ends up loving it. Thank you so much to all of you for participating in this. I am really excited to read everybody's picks and I do need to note that Michelle gave me two different options which was very nice of her. So for hers I decided to go with New Kid by Jerry Craft because this is a graphic novel I've been meaning to read for like a year. I've heard so many good things about it. So so here is my TBR. I own these three books physically, New Kid, Piranesi by Susanna Clarke, and The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin, who I love. I'm always excited to read more N.K. Jemisin, so yay for a reason to continue with her books. So I have these three physically, and then these two books I have on audio, which actually also works out pretty nicely for the purposes of this video. I've got two audiobooks, I've got a graphic novel, and then two physical books. So we're gonna read all of these and see how these creators did picking books that I would enjoy. And I'm excited because these are books I've been wanting to read, but I don't know when I would have gotten around to them, so it's kind of cool to have a reason to pick them up. I will be back with you once I have started my first book. I started reading Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed and wow, <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, this book, like I, it, it is compulsively readable. It has one of the most intense and attention grabbing first scenes that I've read in a book. I've read a handful of books like this where it has a scene at the beginning that you're just like, oh my god. And this is definitely one of them, which I'd heard this before, but then the book goes some really interesting places. So the two main characters in the book are a young black woman who is a babysitter for a white family and the mom of the child that she babysits for. And in the first scene, the mom calls her late at night for like an emergency thing to take her daughter to the grocery store while they deal with this, like a thing at the house. So she takes the little girl to this like high-end grocery store that's like mostly with white people and then a woman is concerned because this white child is out really late with this young black woman and the security guard is called and they're like questioning whether she's stolen the child. It's like a whole thing and it's horrifying. And then it kind of goes from there and it is so interesting too. I think like I think especially for me because 
you know, I have kids. And so the way that this is talking about like the relationships that people have with people who do childcare for them, especially when there's this racial piece of it involved, like, oh man. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, it, it's like a train wreck. <laughs> like I can't, I can't look away. And it's, it's so interesting being in the head of this white woman who sees herself in a certain way, but is definitely starting to cross boundaries that are really inappropriate. And I'm so nervous of like, what is going to happen? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting. And you know, it's particularly wild, because there are certain things about this book that are fairly relatable to my own experience. The fact that this woman is sort of a social media influencer, entrepreneur type person, like in that kind of space, dealing with having two small children and balancing that with her career aspirations, but being a younger mother than a lot of the other women in her circles and like not quite knowing how to relate. I was like, yeah, I mean, like a lot of that is very relatable to me. You know, I live in Manhattan, I have two kids, but like most of the other <laughs> most of the other parents are a solid decade older than me. And you know, like some of them are wonderful and I can talk to them, but sometimes I do like struggle with how to connect. So yeah, it's like really interesting because I can relate to that. And then like having a babysitter and navigating that relationship, because it's it, in some ways it is this intimate thing, right? That you're bringing somebody into your home, they're getting to know your family, they're caring for your children, and they can become an important part of your life, but also like where are those boundaries and how do you treat them and how do you interact with them and all of that stuff really matters. And uh, anyway, it's a fascinating book. I will probably check back in once I've made significantly more progress, but so far, Charles, great pick. I, I'm very into it. So I finished the entire audiobook today and I freaking loved it. I think this is actually going to be on my list of favorite books of the year. So uh, we are off to a very strong start. Man, that woman that she works for, she was a piece of work. Let me tell you, like, oh man, the characterization in this book is phenomenal. Like, and the the nuance of the way that she deals with complex issues is just fascinating. I'm gonna have to go and look at reviews of what other people have written, but this was just a fantastic, perfectly paced, well characterized novel. And I like I couldn't look away. I couldn't put it down. Yeah. And this white woman that she works for starts crossing boundaries and it just gets worse and it's kind of tragic too because like the the our main character really loves and cares about her daughter the little girl that she cares for and the mom is like not being a great mom and anyway it's so interesting and it deals with things of like fetishizing people of color and how much of an issue that is and yeah it's a fascinating book. So highly recommend if you haven't read it. It was really good. Yeah, really, really good. I basically finished it and was like, mm, I might need to own a copy of this. And it was on sale for like $10 in the hardcover. So I was like, done and done. Um, so I've ordered a copy. I think tonight I'm actually going to start reading the graphic novel New Kid. So it's a little late, but I could probably make some good progress on that tonight. So I will check back in with you guys probably sometime tomorrow with an update. Good morning, everybody. I have some updates for you. I've been kind of flying through stuff. So uh, I'm going to see if maybe I can just do this as a weekend vlog. I started on Friday. It's Saturday and I'm getting through things really quickly. So last night I did read New Kid by Jerry Craft and I thought it was great. I'm probably going to give this like five stars. It's a middle grade graphic novel about a light-skinned black boy who starts at a new school that is this very elite private school and 
it's about his experience there and some of the microaggressions he faces, the difficulty of fitting in, of making friends, the experiences of himself and the other students who are not white. And I think it paints a complex portrait of it. And I could see this being really relatable to some students. It's pretty interesting. I mean, even just little stuff like you know, one of the teachers always calling the black kids the wrong name and getting them mixed up. <laughs> it, like, like li little things or, you know, going to a book fair and having this like white lady teacher give these fantasy books to the white kids and then give these like gritty urban stories to the black kids. And meanwhile, one of them, like his dad is a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, like just a lot of the assumptions being made. Uh, so yeah, this was great. Another fantastic pick. And I think it does a good job of dealing with this issue of privilege as well, because the main character in it is there on financial aid. And like you see the disparity between him and some of the other kids there with financial aid versus some of the kids with really wealthy families. And yet, like, it humanizes some of them as well, that you can see that go both ways, that some of them are stuck up, some of them just, like, want to have friends and also feel on the outskirts. I think it does a really nice job of portraying all of those those different things. And at least for me, it's kind of relatable. He lives in New York City and is going up north to the school during the daytime. We live in New York City in a neighborhood also where we're, you know, we're, like, solidly middle class for the area we live in. But some of the other families at the school my kids go to are <laughs> very, very wealthy. So um, yeah, like the that disparity is, is familiar. It was really interesting, really good book. I'm enjoying it. Oh, my arm is getting tired. I've also started listening to Transcendent Kingdom by Yaa Jesse. It's not a very long audiobook, so I think I'll probably finish it up today. And so far, I'm I'm loving it. So I have to say, like, these people clearly did a great job picking books for me, at least so far. I'm very impressed. Uh, I don't know that I would have picked up Transcendent Kingdom anytime super soon because it is more literary fiction, which I sometimes do like, but I just pick it up much more rarely. But I'm glad I'm reading it. It's really... Uh, striking me in some interesting ways with where I'm at with some stuff. So this is following a woman who is in a neuroscience PhD program and her parents are immigrants from Ghana. So part of it is about the immigrant experience. It also is dealing with mental health issues amongst her family. And she's also in this weird space of having grown up in evangelical Christianity, but being a scientist and trying to navigate some of those things. And that part to me is incredibly relatable. Like there's a lot of references to specific things in biblical texts and things that were a lot of what my experience growing up in evangelical Christianity was like. And the experience of kind of like deconstructing out of that, but also see, like, seeing value in faith and trying to figure out where that fits. I was like, yeah, that is so, so relatable. And she's just like, excuse my kids in the background, but like, she's just like nailing it. I'm loving it. It's a beautiful book. And uh, it's also just interesting seeing like the experience of having an immigrant family and having these issues with mental health in family members, and then also dealing with racism and microaggressions and being a woman in STEM, which I know is an issue too. So it's, it is interesting because another thing I have connection with is my husband is a professor and a scientist. And so he talks about this issue of women in STEM and then himself is a black man in STEM, which, you know, like a lot of the people who are professors in the sciences are do tend to be white. It does tend to be heavily white, heavily male. And so again, I'm like, yeah, like this is what those experiences are like. Um, it's a great book. So also, Laura, thank you. Wonderful pick. I'm loving it. I will check back in once I've finished it, but it's, it's just been phenomenal. And then I'm not far into it yet, but last night I did just barely just barely start reading Piranesi by Susanna Clark, which I'm excited to pick up because I've heard great things about it and it's not too long. So this is why I'm thinking maybe I can just read all of these this weekend because it's going super fast. I'm going to see if I can do this as just like a weekend vlog. Yeah, so this is intriguing. I don't really know what to think about it so far. Like it's kind of bizarre the main character is, I guess, in a huge house. 
I don't, I don't know. Like, this is really hard to explain. I now understand why people who've read this have had a hard time explaining it because it's a little bit uh, strange and confusing to read, but I'm like trying to slowly wrap my head around like where we are and what's going on. It's weird because it's a house, but the way it's described sometimes reads like earth, but it's not. And there's, a, I don't know, it's, it's weird. So I'm not disliking it. It's not weird in a bad way, just like disorienting a little bit. So we'll see how that goes. So it is about 11 o'clock in the morning. I need to go to the post office. I need to go to my local bookstore to sell some books. I'll probably be in line there for a while. So I may, will probably get to finish my audiobook while I'm out running errands. So I'm going to head out and uh, yeah, maybe take you guys along with me. Let's go. So I did my errands. I got home just in time to premiere my June wrap up. And uh, while I was out, I did in fact finish the audiobook for Transcendent Kingdom. And I freaking loved it. It was so good. Um, another really great pick. Honestly, I'm kind of thrilled. This is how I'm starting off my month. People did a great job picking books for me. This was so thought provoking and moving. And I just think Ah, the way she deals with, you know, her brother had died from an overdose of opioids after becoming an addict, after an injury, so she's dealing with that and how that led her into her current research. It's dealing with all of the stuff of church and spirituality and the complexity of that and this false binary that gets set up of, like, picking God or science that it can be both. It doesn't have to necessarily be either or. I loved this book <laughs> so much. Um, again, I like it feels weird to within a couple days of each other have two books that I kind of want to make favorites of the year. But honestly, I want this to be one of my favorites of the year too. So I'm gonna sit on it and before I decide for sure with this and such a fun age, but both really, really fantastic books. The writing. Um but yeah, the writing quality is so good. I low-key want to get a get a copy of Transcendent Kingdom too. I might like see if it'll come available at some point on Book of the Month again so I can get it as an add-on. I'm gonna like I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get it there. Uh, speaking of getting new books though, I thought I would share the books that I got at the Strand because, you know, I get store credit. I'm clearly going to go shopping. I didn't spend all of the money that I got, but I did spend most of it. I think I have like a few dollars left, which doubtless I will use. So I got four books. First up, I got The Word for World is Forest by Ursula K. Le Guin. I have only read one book by Ursula K. Le Guin in the past. I read Wizard of Earthsea many years ago. I really want to read more from her. I'm, I'm low-key thinking I might do a project where I read some female classics of genre fiction. It's something I want to work on. It's not terribly long. I think this one is a sci-fi, so I'm curious to see how that goes. I also picked up book three of Keeper of the Lost Cities. This is Everblaze. I've read book one. I have book two and I'm planning on reading it soon and I have a feeling I'm going to want to continue on with the series. This was like 10 bucks so I grabbed that. Then because I'm reading The Killing Moon for this video and I've been telling myself that I needed to read the first book before I picked up the second book but I'm now officially doing it, I got The Shadowed Sun <laughs> by N.K. Jemisin. So if I want to continue with the Dream Blood duology, I have book two. And the final book that I picked up is a new release I'd been interested in. This is Blackout by Daniel Clayton, Tiffany D. Jackson, Nick Stone, Angie Thomas, Ashley Woodfolk, and Nicola Yoon. Um, all of them came together to write stories um, like YA romances where there's a blackout in New York City and things happen with different teens. So I'm excited to read this. I've heard good things and I really like all of the authors. So not bad. I got these four books and I still have a few dollars left from store credit. 
I'm, I'm happy. So three out of five books down already. We're doing really well. I'm going to dive a little more into Piranesi this evening and I will check back in with you guys once I've made some progress. So when I say Piranesi is strange, I want to give you kind of a sense of what I mean. This is the first page of the book. When the moon rose in the third northern hall, I went to the ninth festival vestibule, etc. So notice that lots of things are capitalized, like staircases, walls, tier upon tier. It's like that there's emphasis on so many things. I think it's intended to give greater weight or personification perhaps to these items. I think that's the purpose, but it's just different. So anyway, I'm going to I'm gonna do some reading. Okay, another weird thing is that this book is fantastical, but it has specific dates. Like his journals are labeled December 2011 to June 2012, June 2012 to November 2012. Like, why? Maybe we'll find out, but it's it's bizarre. It's just, it's a strange book. It's a little disorienting, but I, I'm, I'm curious. Good morning. It's Sunday and last night I did finish reading Piranesi by Susanna Clark. So this was a pretty interesting book. You do eventually figure out what's going on and things start to make sense. It's as I, I think as I had said before, it's one of these things where it's a little bit disorienting for the first part of the book where you're like, what? This doesn't make sense. Something's off. This is weird. Like, what exactly is going on? But it does eventually start to make sense. It's like she begins to reveal what the mystery is of who is Piranesi and what's the deal with the house. The difficult thing talking about this book is there's not a lot you can say without spoiling things, which I've heard other people say before, and I totally get why that's true, because if you say very much, it, it spoils stuff. But what I can say without getting into spoilers is it's slower to read because there's a lot to parse through and you have to pay close attention to figure out what's going on. I think too you could read it even more closely than I did. There's a ton of references. Even the title of the book, Piranesi, is a reference to I think an Italian artist and architect. And there's a lot of references to scientists and Greek mythology, etc. peppered throughout the book. Piranesi is living in this old labyrinthine maze-like house with all these statues and rooms and strange things. It was a very interesting book. For the most part, I did actually enjoy the experience of reading it. This is the sort of thing, though, that I feel like people are either going to love or hate. This is either going to be your thing or not be your thing, because it's a very particular type of slow-paced, dense writing that you may like or you may not. I did like that part of it. I do have one kind of question issue, possibly, with this book. Uh, the problem is, is it's super spoilery to talk about, <laughs> but as everything kind of gets unraveled, there were a few things that made me feel like possibly this book is a little bit racially insensitive. And I do think this is something that could be really easy to miss because, uh, how to talk about this without spoiling things. The one thing that we learn late in the book is that the main character is half Ghanaian. His mother was from Ghana. His hair is described as dark and tightly curled. So he's a biracial black man. If you've read the, and I guess what I'll just say is that if you have read this book um, and you know what happens, like think about like the setup of it, the ending of it, I do feel like the fact that our main character is a black man might change the way that you think about the ending. And it's it, it feels like a real choice to me. And again, it's subtle. It's something that I feel like a lot of people would probably miss because if you miss those couple of descriptive elements that are telling you who the character is, because it's not like explicitly described. But at one point we hear that his mother was Ghanaian, so she was from Ghana. We get a couple of descriptions of his hair type. And so you're able to kind of piece it together that way. But I think if you weren't reading it really closely or noticing those things, it would be easy to miss it. And then like, yeah, it's a great book. But like then when you then knowing that and knowing the way that it ends, I'm like, I'm uncomfortable, like I'm uncomfortable with the choice that this author made. Um, 
editing Bethany here, I wanted to pop in real quick and uh, add a little bit to this. I do want to say, like, I think there's a way to do this narrative. And, you know, again, I don't want to be spoilery about it, but I, I do think there is some level of nuance to the topics the author is covering with all of this. And it, like, it could be done well. Part of the issue, though, is the fact that you're, <laughs> she's doing what she's doing, and the fact that this character is Black, which does kind of change everything, is sort of like a blink and you miss it thing. It's not really explored in depth, and it is kind of thrown in towards the end. Um, so I think like a lot of readers probably would read this and wouldn't even pick up on that fact. And it really does throw everything into a different light when you realize it, given the ending and like the themes. So anyway, I, I don't know, like the, this is not me trying to say this is like bad or something I would tell people not to read or anything. I just feel like it could have, it could have been done better. It could have been done better, you know? Anyway, so if you have read this book, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below your thoughts on it. Did you pick up on that? Did you have feelings about it? Or like now hearing me say it, if you didn't pick up on it, like does that change your feelings toward the book? I don't know. Like I don't know what to do with that. And I'm not really sure how I'm going to rate it because it's a really intricately written book. And I think it's really interesting. I enjoyed my reading experience of it. There's a lot that I like about it, but then like getting to the ending and realizing all of that, I was like, I don't love that. I don't, I don't love that. I don't know. Anyway, um, that said, I can totally see why this is a book that was selected for me because I do think that the type of storytelling, the writing, the atmosphere, like this, this does feel like the kind of thing I would like. It is kind of reminiscent of reading The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, which I also absolutely adored. And so um, this is obviously a much shorter book and a different kind of story, but they have some similarities. So I can see why this was picked for me. I think it's a really good pick for me. And if it wasn't for this one thing, which is less about the actual writing and more about like the choices that the author made with this book, um, I, you know, I probably would have a much more glowing review. But I'm glad that I got around to reading it. It was definitely an interesting one. Okay, so that said, I am not far into it yet, but I did start reading The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin. I've only just read like a few pages so far. I am really excited to get into this. N.K. Jemisin is one of my favorite authors, so I'm always happy to have a reason to read more of her backlist, and I've heard great things about this. This one is the first book in a sci-fi duology um, that I know is set on another planet, very loosely inspired by ancient Egypt, and I'm excited about it. I, I mean, I, I always love reading N.K. Jemisin. So I'm going to work on doing some reading of this today, and I will check back in with you guys once I've made some progress. So far, though, this has been great, and I'm really, really pleased with all the books that everybody picked for me. I think people clearly, like, know me pretty well. <laughs> like, y'all did a pretty good job of picking books that I would be into. Hello, everybody. It is Monday afternoon. Um, obviously, I did not finish reading this book over the weekend, which is fine. I uh, maybe I'll finish it tonight. Maybe. I did read like a quarter of it. And it's very, very good. It's just like, I mean, I mean, and I should have known as with NK Jemisin's writing, generally speaking, it does take me a little bit longer to read. I love it. And it's so good and immersive. But also there's always just so much to unpack. And this is definitely no different. So it's not what I would call a quick read, but a thoroughly enjoyable one. So this is really interesting. It's set on a planet where there's dream magic that's linked to this moon, or they think it's linked to this moon, and maybe this goddess. And there's a city where people bring offerings of their dreams, but also people can die in their dreams and be gathered by these sort of priests who like kind of kill people for their dream blood, hence the dream blood duology. It's pretty wild, but there's like political machinations going on. There's an ambassador who's threatened. There's all these like twists and turns and I am loving it. I'm really into it. I gotta say N.K. Jemisin is like a master of world building. 
she's so amazing at it and it sort of slowly unfolds she puts you in the story without telling you a whole lot just barely what you need for the scene that you're in and then a little bit at a time you get to know more about the world you're in about the magic about the people about the culture about the history and like the thing about the worlds that she builds that's so amazing to me is even though we don't know everything about it as the reader and she doesn't just kind of like dump everything or info dump, it's very clear that she knows everything about how this world functions and it feels like a fully existing lived in world even if we're not seeing all of it on page all the time and I just I it is such a it's such a joy. <laughs> it's always such a joy for me to read her books. And I am really, really enjoying this one. The characters are also really interesting. She does a great job of writing complex, nuanced characters with, you know, morality that is their own, even if it's not always clear what's good or bad in a given situation. It's great. I'm loving it. So I'm going to keep reading this today slash tonight, and I will check back in once I've either made some more progress or finished. Hello everybody, it is Tuesday and I am still not done with Killing Moon, but I only have like 100 pages left, so I definitely think I can finish it up today. I am loving this. Like again, as I said last time, it's not a book that I can totally fly through, but I'm just so engrossed in the world and the characters, in the political machinations and the twists and turns, and I like feel for these characters. I am definitely enjoying it. I feel like anytime I pick up a book by N.K. Jemisin, I just know I'm gonna have a great time with it. I don't think this is gonna top Broken Earth trilogy for me for sure, but very, very good. I for sure will be reading the next book in the duology. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just been a lot of fun. So I'm gonna read the last hundred pages and then I will check back in for a final overview of how this project has gone. All right, I did it. I finished The Killing Moon. It's like three o'clock in the afternoon, Tuesday. It was fantastic. I mean, it was great. What else? Like, solid ending, solid book. It's definitely a slow burn. It takes its time, but like, the characters are great. The world building is great. I do think that the, the characterization in this book is not, like, it's for most authors, it's very, very good, but it's not quite as good as characterization I've seen in other N.K. Jemisin books, which I think this was actually the first book she wrote, which might be part of it. Uh, 100,000 Kingdoms was her debut in terms of publishing, but she actually wrote The Killing Moon earlier. And while it's still a phenomenal book, I do think that she's gotten better at character work since then. But still, I loved it. Definitely a five star read. And yeah, this was great. So what have we learned from this? Basically that you all are amazing at picking up books for me to read and I should probably do this again. Um, like, I guess you guys maybe know me better than I know myself. And I'm really happy because all of these are books that like, I'm not sure when I would have gotten to and I found a couple new favorites. I enjoyed everything that I read such a success. I'm really happy. I hope you guys will go and check out all of the wonderful booktubers who participated and huge thank you to all of them for selecting books for me to read and participating in this. It was really fun and I'm I'm thoroughly impressed. I loved these books. They were like I I really enjoyed my experience with all of these books. All of them were great. Uh, I got two new favorites of the year out of it, two five stars, a four star, like well done. <laughs> Very well done. I'm impressed. This was great. So talk to me in the comments down below. I love to hear any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, tell me about a book that you put off reading and when you finally got around to it, you loved it. Because a couple of these I was like, yeah, I think I'll like them, but I didn't, like, they weren't high on my priority list. And then go figure, they were amazing. This is... So tell me about a book like that for you. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.